Fox Soul, our voice, our truth. Almost everything of the ups and downs of the black community, our music has been the soundtrack for. So our voice, our truth, we should be speaking about what our truth is today. Girl, you are picture perfect, perfect picture in my eyes. Girl, you are picture perfect, perfect picture. Yes, you are. Yeah. I couldn't draw you better, baby. You were so divine, I guess. Got to kiss time when he came up with your design i couldn't draw you better baby worse can i describe how you look under these stars tonight bless into my eyes girl you are picture perfect perfect picture in my eyes girl you are picture perfect Perfect picture, yes you are. Yeah. I couldn't draw you better, baby. Just holding your hand gives me satisfaction similar to when to lovers days. I couldn't draw you better, baby. Neck was made for me to kiss on. All my songs seem to run on if I run about you. It's your perfect girl in my eyes. Yes, you are. Girl, you are. Girl, you are to me. It's your perfect girl. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you are. I couldn't draw you better, baby. Look into your eyes. I see beauty is not only skin deep. In love with your mind. Couldn't draw you better, baby. Only dreams can duplicate you. I thank God that He made you and that you chose me. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Listen, girl, I ain't jealous, but uh, I'm jealous of your jeans, girl, cause they can rub your long legs of your hat, girl, cause it can kiss your forehead. I'm jealous of your belt, girl, cause it can hug your waistline. I love your waistline. I hug your waistline. I'm jealous of your dress, girl, cause it can hug your hips, yeah. Up your lipstick, cause it can kiss your lips, yeah. Jealous of your shoes, girl, cause they can kiss your toes, yeah. I love your toes, yeah. I kiss your toes, yeah. Jealous of your earrings, I wanna kiss your ears. Oh, 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 oh. Girl, I wanna get to know you better. Let's get together, cause. You look picture perfect, girl, tonight. Yeah, yeah. So picture perfect uh, was done with some good friends of mine. First, my boy Aaron Harden, who's the musical director of my band. He's been he's been he's been in my band since he graduated from college, which is definitely maybe ten or twelve years ago, maybe even longer. Um, he did the track with. Another amazing producer named Slim Cat seventy eight, um, and they initially just sent me the idea, and I was like, oh, this, "Let's load this up. This is done already, right?" Um, well, I'll tell you that at the time, my wife was pregnant with our first son, and she was having a pretty tough pregnancy. She was really uncomfortable and the whole nine. So my whole intention of writing the song was really as um, an ode to my wife and like try to make her feel better, try to make her. You know, tell her that, like, I know you don't feel it, but, yo, you look picture perfect. Like, you cannot be any more angelic than you seem right now. Like, when I when I even think about the fact that, like, 
a child is growing inside of a person, right? And you're feeding them from the inside and everything like this, the developing is, is there's no truer um, example of God than that, you know? So when you listen to Picture Perfect, uh, uh, there's a lot of um, angelic references and stuff like that, uh, comparisons. But it was really just a song that I was trying to write to my wife, just telling her that, you know, you look absolutely perfect to me. This is exactly the way, you know, I wouldn't want you any other way. Now, what I'll tell you, it didn't work. It didn't give me any brownie points at the time. <laughs> Maybe later, you know what I'm saying? But that was the overall goal in doing Picture Perfect. Eric Roberson is a singer, songwriter, independent artist, father of three amazing kids, married 14 years, proud Howard alum, Jersey cat uh, that loves to make music, makes a living, and takes care of my family doing music. So I was uh, born in uh, Newark, New Jersey, but I was raised in Rawway, New Jersey, North Jersey. Uh, I now live in South Jersey, but growing up, man, the beautiful thing about Jersey is you had uh, different levels of influence, you know? I was close enough to New York to witness the birth of hip hop. I remember my, my friends, older brothers coming home from parties. I remember specifically uh, one of them coming home with a flyer and like, like just looking at it, trying to understand what it, what it was, you know? And my, my cousin's playing um, Lottie Dottie and, um, and the message for me for the first time and trying to like just decipher this new, new feel. Of course, we had house music, of course, R&B and soul was heavy, uh, rock and roll, you think of uh, Bon Jovi as well. Like you, you had a lot of that. And of course, we were church kids too. So when it came time to do music, I think that's the beautiful thing. When you look at the Fugees, you look at Queen Latifah, you look at Poor Righteous Teachers, you look at Naughty by Nature, there's something a little different about them. And they're close enough to get the culture of hip hop and different enough, but we're far enough to kind of find our own identity. And I think that's the beautiful thing about Jersey. It's like, when it came time for me to do music, I had to figure out, man, am I, am I doing house music? Am I doing hip hop? Am I doing R&B? So am I doing church music? Like, why not do all of it? Why not just mix it all together? Because I was going to choir rehearsal three times a week, <laughs> you know what I mean? We was going to, every party was going, they was really playing house music. At that time, he wasn't playing hip hop, but we was listening to hip hop all week. We was in the cafeterias, banging on our tables, rapping, freestyle rapping with our friends, going to the clubs, dancing to house music. My dad bringing home rock and roll and, and Earth, Wind and & Fire albums through the week. And then we singing in church all day Sunday. So we were surrounded by just music, but it kind of really helped me shape my identity because I was distant enough to kind of find myself in all of it. Man, first of all, music is all about feel, right? There's a feeling behind it. So I learned early on, like the first time a song ever gave me goosebumps was in church, right? The energy of the room, like, man, this is this song is amazing. It's going crazy. This woman has hit this note and the whole place has lost it. Um, but then also I learned how to sing in harmony was at church, you know? Uh, the sopranos are singing this one note. The altos are singing this one note. Man, should I be singing that? No, I got to sing this note to stay on that. So when it came time to get in the studio and sing harmonies, I kind of already knew how to do it just because the choir director for the long time said, do, do, do. Now you sing this and you sing, you know, and so I grew up just with uh, those le valuable lessons. I, I didn't go to a music school. I didn't, I, I was playing saxophone when I was younger and stuff like that, but I didn't have like a, a lot of music classes. So church was my music class. And really my, my pen, my dedication to the pen started with this group called Commission out of Detroit. Most, most of like your groups from the nineties and uh, 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 we've all been influenced by Commission. And I, my dad had won um, a CD at a family reunion. And I remember I was ironing my clothes, it was probably like 12 or something like that. And I was in the basement, I just grabbed a CD, like just wanted some music to play while ironing my clothes, getting ready for school. And I put the CD in, just plus play, I didn't know who they were or whatever. And as I'm ironing my clothes, I notice my clothes are wet as I'm ironing. I'm like, why are my, why are my clothes wet? And I didn't realize that I had, I started crying from the music and my tears were falling on my clothes as I was ironing. And I was like, I stopped and was like, didn't even realize the song was like punching me in the chest. Like it just really affected me. And I remember going like, remember the day like it was yesterday, I said, whatever that is, I want to do that. Like whatever that is, like it had an effect on me. And I became a huge fan. Eventually 
you know, met Fred Ham and we actually have a, a group together called United Tenors. We, we put our album out several years ago. And he's one of my heroes, one of the reasons why I started writing, one of the reasons I really took it serious, like combining words and trying to com connect that feeling. And all that really started in church. You know, I, I wouldn't be the songwriter I am today um, without those lessons. Get your wings, little brother. Show how fly you are. One thing I would tell you for a, a person out there who doesn't have the connections, think about this. There was plenty of times where I might say, this week I'm writing for Mary J. Blige, or this week I'm writing for Beyonce, or this week I'm writing for Usher, or this week I'm writing for whoever, whether I have the connections for them or not, because it's going to put me in a certain space, a certain sound that I wouldn't naturally go to. Um, but but I've written for Music Soul Child, Charlie Wilson, Will Downing, uh, Will Smith, um, Jill Scott, Vivian Green, Carl Thomas, the list goes on, 112, a whole bunch. And sometimes I've just wrote a great song and someone wanted that song. And sometimes you you sit down and you really, you know, cultivate a sound or a conversation. I, I'll tell you, like with Vivian Green, she was when I worked on her album, it was her first album, she was going through a breakup. She was coming in the studio sad. So we would talk for the first two hours about heartache. We're not going to then just sit in and write, let's go in and party. You know what I mean? She She's going through it. So let's write about something by going through it. So when you listen to that first album, there's there's some there's some tougher songs in there about that. And we, you know, we had to turn and make it somewhat inspirational. And those songs were, were big records for her. So, you know, I think that was the right way to do it. But I think that's the thing, man. I, I, I think as a writer, take a minute and listen, you know, listen to what someone is going through, or what they might hear or what might be different. Um, with Music Soul Child, I think he just, you know, we were friends, I was seeing what he was working on, and I had I had a song called Previous Cats, perfect example. Um, when I met Music, this is before he even had a record deal, and I played a song for him, and he said, oh, I want this song for my second album. I go, oh, okay, you, you don't have a record deal? But okay, I got you, second album, that's cool. And, uh, so he gets signed to Def Jam. We're making this first album. I write a song called Merry Go Round on the first album, and the album's coming great. And I say, hey, man, you know, we still got this song, Previous Cats. Now nah, that's for my second album. Got you, no problem. Album comes out, it sells millions of copies. Music, Soul Child becomes Music Soul Child to the world. A couple of years later, I get a phone call. And he's like, yo, man, I'm working on that second album. What's up with that song, Previous Cats? It's like, Yo, you different, <laughs> you know what I mean? But he he saw a certain vision of how things were gonna be laid out and he heard a song that I wrote that he related to and, and won it. So um, I think you, you know, as a writer, you can build your sound and some people may want that sound, but it doesn't also hurt to um, use your creativity, imagination to one, cultivate a sound for somebody or chase a sound from somebody that you don't even have a chance to, to work with immediately, you know, you may get to that person eventually. This is Tracks and Tales, my boy Eric Rovers, and this song is called Superman. Don't tuck your cape in, young sister. Let it blow right in the wind. They want you to be Clark King, young brother. But you're more like Superman. Yeah. First of all, don't apologize for the skin you're in. It shows just how deep we are, reminds us where we've been. Sure, we had some tough times. Sure, there's more to come. But anything is possible. You're black, gifted, and young. Spread your wings, little lady. Show how fly you are. To reach and touch the stars. Oh, show how fly you are. A queen of possibilities. The best for me by far. Don't tuck your cape in your sister. Let it blow right in the wind. They want you to be quacking. Come on like Superman. 
physically. Yeah, when it's that, when it comes to that, we're blessed. But understand that your mind may be the strongest yet. Sure, we invented many things. What would this world be without the pensions that were made by people like you and me? Spread your wings, little brother. Show how fly you are. Send reach and touch the stars. Oh, no, no. Show how fly you are. A king of possibilities. The best to me by far. Don't tuck your cave in, young sister. Let it blow right in the wind. They want you to be clocking, young brother. Watch you more like Superman. this song for my three boys so the one thing I want you to take from this is dig it, sing it to your son sing it to your daughters don't ever think that it can't be possible to do anything they want to do don't tuck your cape in so we're gonna sing this song for them for the little ones out there let's go hey don't tuck your cape in young sister let it blow right in the wind More like Superman. Yeah, yeah. Don't tuck your cape in, young sister. Let it blow right in the wind. Yeah. They want you to be clocking, young brother. But you're more like Super. But you're more like Super. But you're more like Superman. So DJ Jazzy Jeff does this event called Chasing Goosebumps. And what it is is he brings in about 30 writers and producers and we'll make an album in one week. We'll pick an artist. Uh, the first time was Glenn Lewis. Uh, the second artist was an artist named Mumu Fresh. And we'll walk in from scratch and we'll just create and write and mix an album in one week. And it's the craziest experience you could ever it, it mind-blowing exhausting experience you could ever possibly imagine it really was sparked from i remember there was a time it was a jam session that was happening in one of the big rooms during it during this jazzy jeff session and another uh, musician was in the room and didn't play 
And I remember I was, when we went into another studio, I said, why weren't you playing during the jam session? They were like, I, I should have played. I just, I just, I don't know. I just, I, I, I didn't want to get, get in the way. And I, I remember telling them, don't ever tuck your cape in. Like, yo, we all got super, super man qualities, right? In different kind of ways. But that joint supposed to fly, man. Don't ever walk in that room again and like tuck your cape. Like, let, let your talent fly. You just as talented as every single person in that room. And that's the part that kind of sparked me. It was like, remember that. <laughs> remember that and apply it. And I think the next night I wrote a song that wrote a song, Superman. My love. HBCU experience is life changing. I became a man at Howard, and I mean, I, and that means it's so many different levels. From like not only getting my heart broken or just running into brick walls, I learned how to carry myself. I learned how to figure things out and prioritize. Um, Howard was great, man, and I showed up with with music equipment, so it just immediately there was a certain thing where like my my freshman dorm room was as big as this chair I'm sitting in right now. It's like, you, you couldn't fit but three, four people in it. And it was probably three people in my room my entire freshman year, just working on music at all times. And I'll tell you, man, one of my best friends, my boy Bubby, uh, owns a restaurant in Brooklyn called Amarachi Prime, right? And I remember when we was freshmen, we were sitting there playing John Madden in the dorm room. And I'm sharing my dreams. I want to become an artist one day. I want to tour the world. I want to become a singer. And while he playing, he said, man, I want to open a club. I want to go back to New York and, you know, have a club where I can have, like, you know, whatever. We, he seen these movies like um, New Jack City or whatever, and he see, like, the club. Like, man, I want that experience, right? Talking 30 years ago, freshman year, we sitting there just playing John Madden, sharing dreams. My man owns a restaurant in Brooklyn now. As soon as you come off Brooklyn Bridge right there, I'm sitting here touring the whole world, you know? And I believe I had something to do with his dreams coming true. And, I, and he had something to do with my dreams coming true. Because that was like the Howard experience. We were like really sewing into each other um, and really, really building. And it's like so many levels of that, you know. Uh, when I just look at the musicians and the producers uh, that were not even in the music department that are running the world. You know, when you think of Young Gurus with Jay-Z, uh, when you think of Rich Harrison who did Crazy in Love, wasn't even in the music department, one of the biggest songs for Beyonce. When I got there, Marlon Wayans was, was in school. And I remember uh, he was real good friends with my boy Filthy. And I mean, we was around him all the time. And he had just shot a movie called Mo Money. And he came back to school. And I was like, man, you just shot a, a movie that's like out amongst the whole world. And now you back sitting with us in like the cafeteria and walking down the hallways and stuff like that. And that was really, really powerful. I got signed to Warner Brothers my sophomore year. I did a, a song called The Moon and then it didn't necessarily work all the way out. But him coming back to school with a whole movie impressed me enough, was impactful enough for me to kind of go back to school after my situation didn't work out. This is Tracks and Tales. This song is I Try To Be Your Friend off my new album, Lessons. I try to be 
your friend but can put aside my love for you I try to be your friend but can put aside my love I thought it'd be Thought we'd be hand in hand But you reach for another man When your tears they fall I'm the one you call How's that night chemistry? I tried to be your friend but can put aside my love for you I try to be your friend but can put Try to be your friend. Uh, I did with uh, another amazing producer named B Jazz from Columbus, Ohio. He came to uh, New Jersey one time. We just had this heavy production writing week. We, we just we was making music, and uh, we came with this idea. And for me, you know, I'm a musical theater major, right? So even though I'm married and and with kids and whatever, and out come out the game, I could oh, I could become fourth grade again, or I can, I can write a song about being a villain or whatever this and that is that. And I, I wanted to write a song about trying to be somebody's friend, but I can't get out of the way uh, the fact that I love them. I have a group called a, The Process. It's a, a Patreon page 
uh, that I've had for about six years now. It's about 800 people that follow me in the studio. So every song I'd make, they, they, they get a copy of or they watch the process of me making music. And this is one of the songs that like, it's just been the, con when we did it, just conversation just stayed. The beautiful thing about the process is I get a chance to know what works and doesn't work almost immediately. Then um, Chris Dave, who I met at Howard University, arguably the best drummer in the entire world, um, played drums on it. And then uh, a brother named Jamar Jones uh, did a string arrangement, which is just absolutely beautiful, put the music over top. And it just was a great, great story, man. And it's to me, this song, which you'll always find at least one or two on my albums, is really more my theater presence, really like showing up. Cause if I never went through it, I'd have never find a love like you. The sky was always blue. So blue. What's up? Hey, come celebrate music culture on Tracks and Tales, exclusively on Fox Soul. And you see, I've written with a ton of people, but for every artist that I wrote for you heard, I probably wrote for three times as many people that the album never came out. And I can't tell you how many times I was in a studio in LA or a studio in New York with some artist that was signed. He said, God, this album is on fire. This is going to change music. This is going to be the next D'Angelo, or this is going to be the next Usher, or this is going to be the next Music Soul Child, the next Erica Badu, the next Beyonce, whatever. And then they just don't come out for whatever reason. It's multiple reasons why it might not come out. And, you know, me and my friends, we called that lost art. And I just really didn't want to be a part of that. Like, I saw so many of those stories of, Here's a person, super talented, could play instruments, could sing their face off, could write, they get signed, and the album doesn't work out or the album doesn't come out. And before you know it, they back in San Diego working again, and it's over. You know, or they held. Like, you know, that's the other part. Like, the album just doesn't come out, and you've been on sign to such and such entertainment label for, like, five years, and, like, what's going on? You know, so for me, it was more about just having more control Success for me is 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 more based around creativity than this than anything else. Um, the way I do music, the way I see it, it ain't really to change the whole world or to become the biggest artist. I really just want to affect the same way that song affected me when I was 12 years old. I, I want to do that, right? So I finished this album. I don't have a record deal. Don't even have any options at the time. Well, I seen a couple artists. I saw this group called Fertile Ground. I see this kid Dwelle got a independent album out. Hmm. I just put it out myself. And I'm in the industry. I'm surrounded by executives and ARs and super producers and signed artists. So I, if I keep it really 100 when I told them what I was doing, yeah, I'm going to put this album on myself. They laugh. Put the album out independently. I walk into a barbershop with no money and two CDs because the CD is going to pay for the haircut. I walk into a takeout spot with no money on purpose. These CDs are going to buy my food. Show up in Columbus, Ohio with no fan base. Nobody know who I am. Put together a house band, get on stage, teach everybody, sell enough CDs, get home, go to the next stop. Go to the next stop. I've seen cities turn from 50 people to 100 people to 300 people. Uh, in November, we're doing the Kennedy Center, a room, 2,500 seat room. You know, first show in DC was 50 people. It's like, we watched it grow. We watched it build. But it built by like challenging each person, each time, like to support it, like shaking hands, hugging you, remembering like, when I come back. I remember you, Earl. Yeah, yeah, you, you a Bengals fan. I remember you. Come on, man. You brought your friends to the show. Come on, come on, let's do it. Like really, like learning the cities and like earning, earning fans. You know, second album came out. Uh, third album came out. And it just started, started really growing, and it was like no turning back from there. And that, you know, I probably was like. The second album, I was probably still considering certain record deals. And when those things fell through, it was like, nah, let's stay with it. Now, I'll tell you, I wasn't the first. I definitely wasn't the only person to do this. What was different from me than most people was Raheem was an independent artist first. And then the label, Jive, came and signed him. Carl Thomas, I remember him being an independent artist. Kim, I remember him being an independent artist. Um, Let us see. The difference was I had already had the deals. 
I'd already saw that side. I already wrote for a ton of people who had major record deals. So I was like, what happens if you just stay on this path? What if happens if you just stay independent and just see what happens and it grows? That's the difference. And everything we really built, we built independently. We built, you know, with the love and support by people who really got down with us, who really bought into the esoteric movement, which is what we still do. God has a funny way of showing you lessons. For years I would stare up in the sky with so many questions. Like, will I find someone for me? Or even if I'm standing in the place I need to be, I can say that every love affair I had was perfect. Every painful day and late night was worth it. Now I'm realize everyone that let me down led me to you. Oh, baby, all the sleepless nights, all the If I never went through it, I'd have never found a love like you. It's not about the past, it's all about the present. I thought love wasn't meant to be until the day I felt it from you. Yeah, so much to me, can't help but give it back to you. Right now, I just want to breathe it, see it, live out. Oh, come on, babe, now realize everyone that led me down, led me to you, led me to you, oh, babe. Sleepless nights, all the heartbreak I had led me to you. Cause if I never went through it, I'd have never found a love like you. The sky was always blue, so blue. Thank God for you, baby, yeah. Now I see, now I realize everyone that led me down, led me to you, led me to you, oh baby, on a sleepless night. funny way of showing you lesson the one part about lessons was interesting when i wrote it that night before i was about to not post it you know uh because i felt like now i realize everyone that let me down led me to you might be a little harsh and thing like man i ain't trying to take no shots at my little exes and nothing like that uh, but I decided to post it anyway, and I think that's, that line didn't come across that way. I think people really could relate to that line. Um, what I will tell you is that uh, on guitar is a brother named J-Mo, one of the most 
prolific guitar players we have in the industry right now and incredible artists as well. And uh, he produced a song along, like I said, with uh, brothers named Anakin and Vader. Uh, and just had a great time recording it and writing it. The first half I wrote the morning of my, my anniversary. And then the second half I did a live session with the process members. And and I'll tell you that recording it in front of them and kind of brainstorming with them. Initially I was calling a song, now I realize, and one of the process members was like, I think you should call the song Lessons. So I don't know who, who, who made it, but shout out to whoever suggested it, you know, because it was a great suggestion and stuff like that. But um, but yeah, Lessons just is my life story, man. And uh, it really tells uh, what I've been through and where I am today. What I want my legacy to be, I think is really simple. I mean, for me personally, that I, that I left this place better than what it was when I got here, that I left people better uh, people that worked for me, people that played with me, um, people I worked for, you know, at the end of the day, my challenge has always been to challenge someone to be better and to challenge me to be better. So, uh, at the end of the day, man, I just really want to be known for somebody who made an impact and left the situation better than it was when they got there. And this is what I really do. Uh, and even to this day when I perform, a lot of people, some people know that I can really do it. Other people are shocked uh, to know that I'm a musician first. Keith Robinson is a Southern boy. I was born in uh, Kentucky. I was raised in uh, Georgia, South Carolina, Alabama area. So uh, I claim the South. Um, I started off as an athlete, but really into basketball. Music was always the backdrop in my house. My mom was a singer. Uh, she kind of passed the torch. She actually, uh, she actually had a record deal with Motown when she was coming up back in the Aretha Franklin days. But uh, my grandmother didn't really want her to uh, venture into the secular music world. So she kind of put it on the back burner and raised me and my brother. And ironically, years later, I ended up getting a deal with Motown uh, as a teenager. So, bring me a heavy dose, make me a happy boy. Get lost with all the 
Karma Sutra came about uh, really in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, it was really about, um, I had heard a lot of people, including myself, about how when you how do you maintain the spark and the sexiness with your partner when y'all sitting in the house, staring at each other with the same sweatpants on three days in a row. Uh, and this was in the, the heat of the pandemic when it looked like there was no end in sight. Um, and I think during the pandemic, there was a lot of, there was a lot of breakups happening. There's a lot of babies being made. So I erred on the side of babies and get to a deeper, deeper level of a uh, sexual connection with your partner. Like, why don't we try some stuff different? Because we got time on our hands. Why don't we get really get into each other and see what time it is? And that's pretty much what Kama Sutra came. I call it the quarantine love record. This next record is uh my new single called Waiting. It's uh pretty personal, but uh I'm sure you can identify with this hymn. Know you hear me, know you see me, can you please forgive? If I keep asking for the same damn thing again Just wanna make sure when I'm asking that I'm asking right So when you finally send her over I can recognize I know you got somebody for me, can you let me in? Is she somewhere out there asking for the same thing? Is she looking like I'm looking, is it on sight? And when I meet her, will she satisfy my appetite? Hey, uh, I'm out here looking for love You got here waiting on love Yeah, yeah, I knew that they fine But you ain't none of them mine I'm really waiting for love uh, you got me waiting for love. You got me waiting on love. Yeah, yeah, I know that they fine, but I'll be passing up time. I'm really waiting for love. Something that I'll never catch Is it really an illusion that just don't exist Is this a battle with temptation that I'll never win Should I just play out my options and just do my thing Is what I'm looking for, looking for it hard to see Or is it cause I'm out here looking for the wrong thing I know you told me not to search and let it find me But I was hoping for a sign while I'm waiting Yeah, Cause I'm waiting on love You got me waiting on love yeah, yeah, I know that they fine, but I'll be passing up time. I'm really waiting on you. Waiting on love. You got me waiting on love. Yeah, yeah, I know that they fine, but I'll be passing up time. I'm really waiting for her. Waiting was a record that probably the last record I wrote on the album. I got married right before the pandemic. I had a kid uh, in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, I got a divorce after the pandemic. So in a year and a half, my life kind of went on a completely uh, 180 spiral. 
And out of it came waiting, which was talking about really waiting on that true connection when you think you have it or when you feel it. Uh, does it is it really an illusion? Does it really exist, or is it a true thing? As far as really locking in with somebody and them truly being your partner for the duration. So it was it, waiting. Is kind of really was it was me just in my prayer closet talking to God about it really, and I was like, this could be a song, uh, but it'd be super personal. And I was like, I don't. I was kind of hesitant to even write it, to be honest with you. And then I started listening. Then I remember LL Cool J put out "I Need Love," so I was like, well. If L can do it, then so can I. So that's what waiting is, man. It's a real intimate record. And again, when I let people hear it, there's people have these super long, elongated explanations of how they identify with the sentiment of of waiting. So I felt like, well, maybe this is a song that needs to be heard. So uh, it's the new single. <clears throat> what is the mark that I want to leave? I mean, that's a that's a that's a long question, that's a long answer. I mean, I guess overall, I want to be, I, I just want to be in the same breath with, with all the great artists that kind of helped identify to reflect and move the culture forward uh, with the gifts that I've been given. I want to be empty. I want to use every single gift that I have, every thought, every vibe that I have. I want it to be used towards uh, just developing the culture, influencing kids behind me to do the same thing and, and really making and pointing people to a, you know, to a, to their, their, their highest self through what it is that I'm doing. If it's a song, if it's a scene, whatever that is, I want to be, I want to be able to max out whatever it is that I'm doing. I don't want to leave nothing on the table.